For a few months, I've been working as a scientist in forensic medicine. Death is always around us, and my workplace can be dark and scary sometimes. My department is the biggest one in the whole building. There are many rooms, mostly laboratories for a lot of different things. Funnily enough, beside me, there are only two other people who work in this department. Usually, I'm the first one who arrives at work. I like my work, but I can tell you that it is really creepy there when you're alone. It was Tuesday last week. My day started with the analysis of body fluids, like blood from dead people. I took the flies of the unlucky ones and went to the storage room, where we store the body fluids. On my way, I felt that something was strange. Something was different than the other days, but I shook the weird feeling off. I had work to do, so I couldn't concentrate on the weird feeling. So I went into the storage room and searched for the fluids, then I returned to the laboratory. On the ground, they were laying other files, older ones from my boss. It seemed that someone had thrown them down. I picked them up and thought to myself that maybe I was at an accident. But there was that weird feeling again. It made me nervous, but I began with the analysis. In the beginning, everything was normal, but then it became weirder and weirder. I thought that I heard footsteps outside the laboratory, then behind me. And then I could feel that someone was standing behind me, but there was nothing. I didn't turn around, I was frozen. I closed my eyes and tried to calm down. In the past, I had many weird and scary encounters. I'm used to it, but I am still nervous and scared when something new happens. I felt that the thing behind me was watching me and the stuff I was doing. Then in the end, I could feel the breath of someone or something against my neck. It was very cold. I just wanted to run away, but I couldn't. I couldn't move my legs. After a while, that felt like hours, it disappeared and I could relax. I was happy when my colleagues showed up. I didn't tell them about the encounter. I've met too many people who made fun of me and the things I experienced. I pretended that nothing happened. This thing, whatever it was, never returned the days after that. And I hope it stays like this. According to my fiance, it all happened when she was around six to eight years old. She and her parents lived in an apartment next to an old church where they often went. My girlfriend isn't religious, neither am I, but as a kid, she liked the organ music there. To her, it sounded mysterious, beautiful and fascinating, different from what she heard before. But that would soon change. A few years later, she woke up in the middle of the night because she heard something strange, organ music, but it sounded weird. It wasn't beautiful anymore. It was scary and creepy and somehow wrong. And another strange thing was that the music sounded like it was very close. She told me that it was impossible because you couldn't hear the organ music of the church outside. It scared her so much that she couldn't sleep anymore. After a while, the creepy music stopped and left her in fear. She asked her parents the next day if they could also hear the creepy music, but they both denied it. They told her that it was probably just a bad dream and my girlfriend believed that. But she told me that it happened again the next few nights. She woke up because of the very loud and creepy organ music and got so scared that she couldn't sleep anymore. And that went on for almost two years. Not every night. It had no pattern from what I heard. For her, it was a very weird experience that left its mark. Every time when we visit her parents and stay overnight, she can't sleep well and has one nightmare after another. Well, I know what some of you are thinking. It was just a bunch of nightmares, maybe sleep paralysis, where she had a hallucination and heard things. But as someone who had experienced a few strange things, I believed her and the feeling that something odd happened to her became stronger two years ago. She took me to a family meeting where I met a cousin of hers. We talked a bit to each other and after a while we talked about strange experiences. Her cousin told me that years ago, when my girlfriend was a child, she stayed for a night at the apartments of my fiancé's parents to babysit, while the parents went to a theatre performance. Out of nowhere, in the middle of the night, she woke up and panicked, because she heard a very loud and creepy organ music that filled her with fear. 
She told me that it went on for almost an hour and that she could hear a quiet laugh when the music took a break. It was very interesting to talk to someone who also had experienced the same thing. I never had the pleasure to hear the creepy organ music when we visited her parents, but I hope that I can hear it someday because I am curious and want to know what's going on there. The whole thing happened when my grandpa was around 23 or 24. At this time, he was in the middle of the studies, demonology and some natural sciences like chemi and biology and physics. He was interested in such topics and worked very hard. One day, a professor he liked came to him and asked him if he would be interested to do some research with him and a few other students at the home of a family, which contacted him. My grandpa was very interested and joined the group. They spent weeks preparing and finally he, two other students and the professor, visited the family at their home. My grandpa wrote that it was a big and beautiful house, suitable for four people with much space for the two children. They had a talk together, the parents and my grandpa's team. They told them the whole story of how it all started. To this time, they lived almost 10 years in the house. All the time, nothing has happened, but one day, their eight-year-old daughter began to see things and talk to the air. At first, the parents thought it was her imagination and that most things she talked to were her invisible friends, but it got weird. The daughter seemed to become more and more scared of something. She couldn't sleep very well, had nightmares and often asked her parents if they could make the child go away. At first, the parents thought that her brother is behind everything and annoys her sister but he denied it every time. Every day, it became worse. The daughter didn't want to be alone anymore because she was scared of the child. Their son also began to experience things. He heard whispers and his toys began to disappear and appear again, completely destroyed. On some nights, the family was woken up by loud banging and other noises, but they couldn't find the source of the noise. They were all scared at this point, there was one night they told the team they couldn't forget. The family was asleep, he wrote. The kids in their rooms, the parents on the couch in the living room. Out of nowhere, all doors in the kitchen began to open. The dishes in the cupboards were thrown out with violence, according to the homeowners. They could hear several footsteps running through the house, and the children also woke up. The whole family was in fear and immediately left the house. When they returned, most of the kitchen was destroyed, as well as a few things in the other rooms of the house. They couldn't find an explanation for the whole thing, but the daughter said that it was all the fault of the child. They didn't really believe in ghosts, but they also didn't know what they should do next. And someday, they came into contact with my grandpa's professor and asked him for help. He took a few students with him and decided to take a closer look. My grandpa wrote in his notes that they couldn't find anything weird at the beginning. It was just a normal looking house with a normal family. The daughter didn't see anything and also the son behaved normally, but soon they noticed many spots in the house that seemed strange, cold and dark. According to my grandpa, it was weird. Such a nice and warm looking house and then such cold and threatening spots. They stayed one day and one night without the family of the house and tried everything to lure something out. In the end, they decided to try it with a Ouija board. They prepared and did everything to protect themselves, and when the night came, they started the session. My grandpa wrote that it took almost two hours to something happened. At first, it started slow. They asked normal questions and the answers were very unspectacular too. But then it got weird and confusing. The being they contacted named itself Oscar, it said it was a child, but after the presser asked how old Oscar is, the being began to insult the team. Oscar said horrible and disgusting things. My grandpa didn't write the insults down, but he mentioned that they were often racist and sexist, things a child would never say, and it got weirder and weirder. At some point, Oscar said he was a grown man, then he was a woman, a teenager, an old man, he clearly wanted to annoy them and something like that can be a huge problem in a Ouija session. 
If you want to try something like that, and you manage to contact something, and this being starts mocking you, then stop. Try to end the session. Oscar became more and more aggressive every minute, and one of the students panicked. A situation Oscar used to focus on the students, who got scared. This student was especially insulted by Oscar. He called him names, said things about how cruel his death will be. And this being even scratched the students, according to my grandpa. And then they heard several footsteps like the family mentioned. My grandpa wrote that they made the session in the kitchen because the professor believed this room is a hot spot. And it seems that he was right. Next to the footsteps, the doors of the cupboards opened and things were thrown down. Everyone was scared, but they wanted to stay strong and don't show any weakness towards Oscar. They used prayers, frankincense, and other stuff against the being. My grandpa wrote that the whole situation was very intense. It was loud and creepy. No one paid attention to the Ouija board anymore. They were all busy fighting Oscar. And suddenly, the footsteps stopped and nothing was thrown through the room anymore. But the atmosphere was still tense, according to my grandpa. They all knew that it wasn't over yet. The session ended when the window of the kitchen bursted, like something was jumping through it outside, he wrote. And then it became silent. The atmosphere calmed down. There was nothing anymore. The whole night they checked every room, every corner of the house, but there were no strange spots anymore. They also checked the window and indeed the shards of the broken glass were outside of the house. Something jumped out of the building. The day after, the family returned. The team explained to them what happened and they were shocked. My grandpa's team stayed with them the whole day and tried to calm them down. Several days went by after the incident and the team met again. The professor told them the family was all right. After that one night, nothing had happened to them anymore. The house was like the years before, silent and beautiful. They talked about Oscar and what this being could have been. But like other ghost experiences, there's no exact explanation for all that. Personally, I believe that this being could have been a demon. I've heard and read that those beings like to disguise themselves as little children, or something else that seems harmless. With something like that, they want to attract the living just so they can scare the shit out of them and eat from their fear. Also, those situations where Oscar changed his identity and began to mock the team, and the threatening atmosphere, the ghost of a child also was the focus of my own Ouija experience. And from my family and the notes of my grandpa, I learned that you should be absolutely careful if you come into contact with a child ghost. The experience of my grandpa that I want to share with you is called The Black Widow. Originally, the story had no title. I added it to the story because it sounded cool. This story is short and not very interesting, but maybe some of you will enjoy it. My grandpa was 28 when this happened and was traveling through the US. I don't know the exact location, but I have read on other notes that seemed coming from that time, something about the western parts of the US, to visit a friend and colleague who was also interested in occult and paranormal things I don't know if he was a scientist like my grandpa, or also a demonologist, but they shared the same interests. My grandpa wrote that he always wanted to visit him, because his friend had told him that he would know where they could find a ghost. My grandpa was absolutely hooked and wanted to find out more about this ghost, although he wrote that he was away from home for many days and would miss my grandma very much. But well, what does one not do in the name of silence? So he wrote, that he visited his friend and they began shortly after to talk about this ghost. He told my grandpa that he heard this ghost has the appearance of a woman who wears a pitch black dress. She would come at night and haunt the local graveyard. The fascination of my grandpa got stronger the longer he heard his friend talk about the ghost. He already made first ideas what this ghost could be and connected it to beings like the woman in white or things from folklore like La Yorana. Please don't be angry if I said that name wrong. It is difficult to decipher. My grandpa and his friend decided to visit the graveyard the same night. 
He wrote that the atmosphere was unique, dark and heavy. For him, it felt like they weren't welcome there. They spent hours in the graveyard, but they couldn't see anything. So they went back to the home of his colleague, where he stayed for a week. He wrote that they visited the graveyard every night, but only on the fourth day, something happened. On this night, my grandpa wrote, the atmosphere of the place had changed. It was so scary that they hesitated to enter the place. Both of them had to gather all of their courage before they could go on. He said that it was different from the night before. He expected that behind every gravestone could jump something at them. And then they reached a point where they didn't go on. He wrote that there was a spot that was darker than the night. He couldn't see it well what it was, but it was like the darkness was gathering there. Like his friend said, from the distance it looked like a woman in a black dress. The entity didn't do anything. No movement came from it. No sound. It was just standing there. Cold came from there and it felt threatening. They didn't dare to move or speak. My grandpa tried to go closer, but he couldn't go on. It felt like a war was in his way. He also said that he was scared so much that he thought he was going crazy. And if his friend wasn't with him, he would have lost his mind. He then wrote that they walked away carefully, but they had the feeling that eyes watched them from all sides and observed every step they took. They felt relieved when they walked out of the graveyard and his friend said that he didn't expect that it would be that bad. They tried it the following night again, for whatever reason, but scientists, am I right? But it seemed that the woman in black or whatever the thing was didn't show up anymore. Sadly, there ends the story already. He wrote that he wanted to get some information about the graveyard, but he didn't have the time. I couldn't find more of his notes. I am sorry. But if someone knows out there anything about a graveyard in the US, especially in the western parts which is said to be haunted, then please tell me about it. I really would like to find out a bit more about that. About the ghost of a woman in a black dress. The family of my mother is a special one full of people who are fascinated by occultism, witchcraft, magic and paranormal things. My grandpa was a demonologist and scientist who did a bunch of research about occults and otherworldly stuff. He also has experienced a lot of things and some of them he's written down. Those notes belong to me today. They're my treasure and I show them almost to no one. There are many scientific things and theories about paranormal and occult stuff theology and alchemy. I'm a scientist myself, with knowledge about chemistry and biology, but even I don't understand all of those notes. They are old, and sometimes difficult to decipher, and it is difficult to make out what my grandpa meant. But I stumbled upon a few stories and experiences of my grandpa, when he was a young man, and I thought that maybe I should share a few with you. Maybe it'll be interesting for you, but if you don't like it, that's okay for me. It's just an experiment. And if you don't believe those stories, that's okay too. Some of them are wild and unbelievable. I'll try to tell it as well as I can from my perspective. Hope you enjoy and have fun listening. This story is called The Hellbound. It happened when my grandpa was in his 30s. At this time, he worked in a laboratory and thought about quitting his work as a demonologist. Apparently, he and my grandma planned a family, and in his opinion, living in a haunted house was spectacular enough. He wanted to be more down to earth, if you know what I mean. He didn't care anyway, because he didn't want to be popular as a demonologist like Ed and Lorraine Warren. For him, it was something of a nice hobby, but his hobby kept catching up with him. One night, a friend called him. He sounded very scared, and told him that he felt threatened by something, which he believed was not from this world. It was enough that my grandpa showed interest and he wanted to figure out what this thing was that threatened his friend. He visited him and stayed with him for several days. His friend told him that he had been watching it for a few weeks. Everywhere he went, something was following him. In the night, it got worse. This thing would walk around his house and it tried to get in one time. He couldn't sleep anymore, he couldn't eat and he was close to not leaving the house anymore. 
He called the police many times, but they couldn't find anything. So he called my grandpa, who had a bit of knowledge about this stuff, and maybe he could find out what was going on. My grandpa asked him how it all started. His friend told him that one night he went home from his favourite pub. He was drunk and stumbled through the landscape as he heard a growling behind him. According to the notes of my grandpa, his friend told him that he turned around but nothing was there. So he started to walk again but after a while he heard the growling sound again. His friend thought to himself that it's maybe a dog who ran away from his home. But the growling got worse every minute he walked. It didn't sound like it was coming from a normal dog. And after a while, this guy got scared. He could see something was moving in the darkness, something big. He kept going and then he could feel a hot breath on his neck. He panicked and ran away and since that day, this thing would follow him. At first, my grandpa thought that this was just the influence of alcohol, but he could see how scared his friend was and he decided to check out if there was really something weird going on. My grandpa wrote that in the first two days and nights, nothing happened, but on the third night, it became interesting. He was sleeping as a loud noise woke him up. His friend was screaming and terrified. My grandpa said that the noise sounded like growling and barking, but it sounded much different from a normal dog. It was loud. You could hear it very clearly through closed doors and windows and unreal, demonic and full of hatred according to him. He could hear that something was moving around the house and back to the front door. And then something heavy crashed against the door. It sounded like a scary situation and my grandpa wrote that he thought he and his friends would die tonight. But whatever it was, after the crash it was gone. My grandpa searched the surroundings of the house if he could find any tracks, but there was nothing. He then went into the nearby village and asked some people if they knew anything about that. If they'd seen something like that or heard or if it's really just a wild dog. But no one seemed to know anything about that. He tried to get some information about the village, about old legends, folklore, whatever. But there was nothing about a dog-like creature, he wrote. And this thing returned the following night with its barking and growling. But this time, he didn't try to get into the house. According to my grandpa, after that thing was gone, he could smell rotten eggs. The smell of sulfur, he stated. Sounds maybe like a cliche, demons and sulfur, but in some of my experiences I also have noticed weird and stinging smells that occurred during or after something weird happened. After that night, the whole atmosphere was bad and dark. His friend's condition got worse, so my grandpa contacted the local priest and had a talk with him. He wrote that the priest was a bit sceptical because he knew that the friend of my grandpa was drunk sometimes. My grandpa didn't give up and convinced the priest to bless the house and his friend. My grandpa also used salt because it is said that salt heals and purifies and a few runes and symbols to protect the home and his friend. My grandpa didn't sleep that night. He checked the surroundings of the house through the windows and at one point he could see something lurking in the darkness. It looked like a tall dog be the biggest he had seen in his entire life. His fur was pitch black and his eyes were glowing. He didn't come any closer to the house, he just stared at it and growled loud enough that my grandpa could hear it. Then it walked away, wrote my grandpa. I've read that he stayed there for the next few days to make sure nothing else happened. It seemed that the dog never returned. He wrote his whole experience down and called this being the Hellbound. Suitable name, I think. There's no explanation what that being was. He wrote a few theories down that it could have really been a normal and very big dog, maybe a wolf, a normal animal. But there were no wolf sightings and this dog was much different from normal ones. Another interesting fact was the sulfur smell. There are a bunch of thoughts after the story and all are different from each other. I'm afraid of deep water. Since I was standing for the first time on the edge of a swimming pool, I was scared. I, it always feels threatening to me. And when I was 12, I got reason to be more afraid. It was the end of summer. My mom had a job again after a long time and after months for a trip with me. Just the two of us. She wanted to get me away for a while from the paranormal and occult stuff. 
because she hates that and didn't like it when my grandma and my aunt introduced me to that. And what could be better to travel to a lake in which you could swim? I was excited, even when I was a bit afraid of the water, because my mother had a lot of trouble and it was the first time after years she had time for me. The day came, the sky was blue and the sun was giving her best on this summer finale. There were a few people and we searched for a place where we could be alone. It was a big lake, so this wasn't much of a problem. First, I was afraid, but moments later, I was swimming and diving through the water. My mother was with me in the beginning, but after a while she left the water and was enjoying the sun. At one time, I began to dive deeper and lay down in the water. I was floating and it was awesome. There's no better feeling. My mind was completely clear. All problems were forgotten. Just me and the silence of the water. When I was running out of air, I swam back to the surface and then back underwater. It was beautiful and I could forget my fear of the deep water. Yes, I even thought that I'd beat it. But if you're really afraid of something, and I mean really, really afraid, then sometimes your fear could strike back when you least expect it. I was floating very long underwater and wanted to swim to the surface again to get some fresh air. But there was something that grabbed my wrist very tight. It was hurting very much and I panicked. I looked around me and saw a woman who looked terrifying. At first, I thought that she was one of the other people at the lake, but she didn't wear a bathing suit. She wore a white, dirty dress. Her hands and face were very bony, if that's the correct word, and her brown hair was floating underwater. She didn't look like a living person. She showed me a grinning smile and tried to pull me closer to her. I, on the other hand, tried to escape from her, but her grip was too strong. I was fighting her and tried to get to the surface because I ran out of air quickly. I feared that I could drown. She didn't let me go, but I managed to reach the surface and I screamed for help as loud as I could. Soon, my mom was there and pulled me out. The woman let me go. When my mom reached me and was gone, I was shivering and very close to crying. She asked me what happened. I lied to her on this day because she hates paranormal things in contrast to my aunt and grandma. I thought she would be angry at them and think that they have a bad influence on me. I was afraid that we would move again, away from them and that I would never see them anymore. I said that I had a cramp and couldn't swim to the land. She believed me. On my wrist where the woman grabbed me was a bruise, a handprint. My mom didn't see me but my grandma noticed it when we were back at her house. I told her the truth about my encounter with the strange woman and she was for a long time the only person who knew about it. She did some sort of prayers and spells on me that would protect me against evil and prevent the woman could following me. When I was older, I did some research on this lake. I wanted to know if somebody died there or if someone else had a strange experience, but there was nothing. I had a few strange experiences in my life most of them scare, scary but harmless. But there were some that gave me nightmares till this day. And this was one of them. Although I have every reason to be completely traumatised. I'm not. I'm a cheerful and happy man with a wonderful and lovely girlfriend. A wonderful job and a wonderful family. But the fear of deep water is something that I can't get rid of. I'll start with the story when I was 18 that I will call the doll. It was my birthday and my girlfriend planned an investigation of a haunted lost place for us. Both of us love creepy stuff and we were young and didn't have much money. So this was one of the most romantic things for us to do. For her, it was the first investigation and because she knows that I have a talent for stumbling into weird situations, mostly by accident, like the Ouija experience when we had a year before. She was a bit nervous. I assured her that I had visited a bunch of lost places, haunted and normal, and most of the time, nothing happened. Well, this investigation was one where something did happen. This lost place was located in the middle of nowhere. An old building whose purpose was long forgotten. Seriously, I don't know what this place was for. It had something of a hospital or a school. We arrived in the afternoon 
and went straight into the building. In the beginning, it wasn't very spectacular. A normal old building, a bit of garbage, graffiti on some walls. But in one room, we found something. A very old and dirty doll, her best days long gone. I love creepy, scary stuff, but I hate dolls. They're suspicious of me. There was something with the doll, something fascinating, but we let her be and went on. After a while, my girlfriend said that she doesn't feel good. She was cold and also I noticed something was happening to me. I got a slight headache. I thought that maybe the reason for this was that I hadn't drunk very much. I ignored it, gave my girlfriend my jackets and we went deeper into the building. Soon I began to hear noises, very silent steps far away. My girlfriend didn't hear them and I also didn't tell her about that because she was already very nervous and I wanted to avoid her getting more scared. I led her in another direction, away from the noises, but I noticed that the steps followed us. At first, I thought that it could maybe be another person or maybe an animal. I usually don't assume that every sound in an abandoned building is coming from something paranormal. An interesting fact was that the steps didn't come any closer. They stopped when we stopped and went on when we began to walk again. After a while, we began to hear laughter that sounded like it was coming from children. My headache was getting worse and also my girlfriend began to feel more sick. She was also very afraid of the noises. Most of the time, I don't trust anything paranormal that takes the form of little children. And because we didn't feel very good, we decided that we should go. We left the building as fast as we could. On our way, I noticed something that scared me. The doll we found in a room was sitting in the middle of a hallway. My girlfriend didn't notice that, or didn't want to. She only wanted to go, and when we left the building, I had to throw up. My circulation was down, and my girlfriend and I had to sit down for a few minutes. We were in a bad shape. Even from the outside, we could hear children's laughter and giggles coming from inside. We had enough and went home, and the further we went, the better we felt. We never returned, although I really wanted to take the damn doll and burn her. The bells. This experience happened when I was around nine or 10, and I attended the fourth grade. Until the seventh grade, my school time wasn't very great. I wasn't very popular among my classmates because of my family and my hobbies. And because I could be a magnet for weird stuff sometimes, most of them avoided me. After a while, I wasn't even mad about their behavior as long as they left me alone. To be honest, sometimes I could understand why they avoided me. At the end of the school year, we went on a trip for a few days. That was something I hated because I had to be around people who didn't like me and I also didn't like. Our trip led us to a boring village where we stayed most of the time in a hostel, which was surrounded by woods. I was in a room with three others who didn't interact with me most of the time. On one day, a local went with us on a forest hike and told us something about the village. Like this place, the story was pretty boring, but there was one interesting thing. We arrived at a place where a long time ago, a little chapel was. The chapel was gone, but the locals told us that sometimes people can hear bells ringing in the night. Teenagers would often go there to test their courage. It was a cute ghost story, and my classmates looked at me and giggled. On our last night there, my roommates had the idea to sneak out of the hostel and make a hike through the woods in the night to the place where the chapel was. They asked me if I wanted to join them. First, I didn't feel like it and wanted to stay in the room, but they annoyed me to the point where I agreed. I already knew what they were up to, to creep me out or something, but I wasn't afraid. We went through the woods and one of them got scared that I thought he would start to cry. We arrived at the place where the chapel once was and stayed there for a few minutes. One of them suddenly began to make fun of me. It was the usual stuff and well, after a while, we suddenly could hear the sound of ringing bells. They were very loud and it seemed that the noises came from every direction. It was bizarre and sounded so unreal, like a dream. It was difficult for me to explain it, but it sounded like they were, but also not there at the same time. Confusing, right? They frightened us, especially the boy who was already scared and we ran away. But at the hostel, the one guy began to cry and also the others were shocked. I was also a bit shocked, 
not as much as they were. For me, it was more funny in the end. They never talked about it again. One of my roommates blamed me for that and all of them avoided me more than before. As a child, I lived a long time with my mom, my grandma and my aunt, because my father was a total asshole. They were interested in occult and paranormal things. My grandma even married a demonologist, my grandpa, who I've sadly never met because he died years before I was born. They were young when they married and after a while they bought a house my grandpa stumbled across at his research. Actually, they didn't want to live there that long. My grandpa just thought it would be helpful with his studies. But they still felt so comfortable there that they stayed. In his studies, my grandpa discovered that there are three paranormal beings who exist in this house. And over the years, he managed to figure out a bit who these beings are. He asked the locals about past owners of the house and did a bunch of things to contact the entities. And in the end, he got three names and a bit of background story about them. Thomas, Maria and Jonathan. I'll start with Thomas. He was the most active one of the three in the house. Once he was one of the owners of the building who died because of a sickness according to old locals my grandpa asked. They described him as a nice person who cared much about other people, even if he didn't know them and helped others as best as he could. He had an open ear for everyone and always tried to give them good advice, how they could solve their problems. But also, he had his bad days and when he was in a bad mood, he was throwing things through rooms. A characteristic he had even after until he died, but not that extreme. He never showed himself in the form of a person and to this day, I don't know how he looked. I never had a photo. He only showed himself in the form of shadows passing by or in little movements. When he had a bad day on the other hand, he was tossing things down. One time, he was even managed to throw a glass from the cabinet in our kitchen. My grandpa was very angry at Thomas after that. In the beginning, I was very afraid of him. For me, that whole stuff was new and I was just a little child. But my grandpa said that there was one thing about him or no things about him that I have to fear. She then told me that if I see the shadows of movements, I can greet him. That would make Thomas happy. I tried it and my fear was gone. To this day, if I see something moving in the house, even when it's just the wind, I greet Thomas and know it sounds weird, but sometimes the surroundings are filled with happiness after that. My aunt and I tried once to contact him through a Ouija board, but nothing happened. It seems like he doesn't want to communicate in other ways with us and we respect that. So enough about Thomas. Next one is Maria and one of the entities I'm a bit afraid of. Although my grandma and my aunt told me she's also harmless. She haunts the attic and would show herself just a few times. In all those years I lived with my grandma, I only noticed her three times in the form of steps and silent humming. I never went in the attic alone until today I get goosebumps when I'm up there. It's cold there and sometimes there's a slight smell of perfume. My girlfriend meant that it smells like flowers or something. I don't know much about Maria. She was once the daughter of someone who owned the house. According to notes, it was in the late 1800s. My grandpa also mentioned that he could feel some sort of strong sadness one time when he was in the attic for his studies. I really want to know her story, but I think that I would never find out. Jonathan. Out of all ghosts, he's the most mysterious one. He appears only at certain times when it's very cold outside and fog lies over the landscape. Then sometimes you can see him in the early morning hours, going through the mist around the house. He has the appearance of an old man with a very kind and peaceful attitude. When you meet him, he won't talk to you. He won't stop talking. He just looks at you with a kind smile and something will tell you that everything will be all right. That you're welcome here. I really don't know who he is. About him, there's nothing much in the notes. Just his name and how he would behave when you meet him. This happened six years ago when I was 17. It was Halloween and my girlfriend and I attended a Halloween party. We had a lot of fun there. 
As it became very late, a few people had the idea to try a Ouija session because someone brought a board to the party. I had done a Ouija session with my aunt before, which tried to talk to a certain person, but sadly nothing happened. And I was a bit drunk, so I thought it would be fun. My aunt would have been absolutely angry with me because you always should do a Ouija board session with a clear mind. It could be a bad idea when you're drunk or high, but being drunk wasn't our only mistake. Again, when you're doing a Ouija session, you need to be prepared. Inform you, do it with a practiced person, buy frankincense and candles, prepare questions and do it with respect. You don't know what you could bring in this world and it could be dangerous. But let's go back to the main story. In the end, we were six people that wanted to try it. My girlfriend and I, three other ladies and a guy that I will call Norman for this story. It's not his real name. The Ouija board belonged to Norman, but he didn't try it before. We went to a quiet room so the other guests couldn't disrupt us. So we were sitting in this room, which was only lit by two phones and we thought that it would be fun of our lives. I don't know anymore how long we were sitting in this room and yelling questions against the board. Two of the three girls became bored and decided to go back to the party. That's also a big mistake. Never break the circle when you're doing a Ouija. Well, in the end, there was just Norman, the other girl, my girlfriend and me, who tried to summon a ghost. We asked questions again and again, and then something happened. When Norman asked for the hundredth time if someone's there, the planchet began to move slowly. We did it. Finally, we had contact with something. Norman then asked who the presence was that was with us in the room. We got a name, Luca. Norman was very happy that something was happening and he went on talking to Luca. A few moments later, we found out that Luca was a little eight-year-old boy. At this point, I got a bad feeling. My grandpa was a demonologist and did research on paranormal and occult things like ghosts, demons and other things to find out more about it. In his notes, he mentioned that evil entities like demons often like to disguise themselves as little children because they seem harmless. And so was Luca, harmless and friendly like a little child. Norman had a lot of fun talking to the boy, but soon the other girl and my girlfriend also noticed that something was odd. The whole atmosphere of the room was just bad. Then one of the phones broke. It belonged to my girlfriend and was a new one, just a few weeks old. I said to Norman that it would be the best if we stopped this, but he didn't listen. But after a while, we didn't get right answers anymore. The plunger just moved to random numbers or letters that didn't make any sense. Also, a weird sweet smell came up in the room. It didn't smell good, it was disgustingly sweet. I remembered that my aunt told me about Ouija sessions and the answers you can get. When the answers to your questions don't make any sense, then you should stop immediately because the thing you called is mocking you at this point. It would be stupid to go on. Finally, Norman also decided that we should end this because he was annoyed. But you can't just go and leave the board there. You have to ask the entity you're talking with if you can stop the session. But every time we asked, the planchet was moving to no. And something like that can be a huge problem. The thing was mocking us and we became a bit afraid. Norman and the other girl wanted to go but they could be persuaded to stay a bit longer. Lucas's game took longer than we would like. Every time he responded just with no or senseless letter number combinations, but finally he responded with yes and we could say goodbye. It was truly bizarre how the atmosphere changed after that. It wasn't threatening anymore and also the disgusting sweet smell was gone. The girl left without a word to us and Norman was very scared after the whole experience. Days after that, I saw Norman again. He didn't look very good, like he was sick. We talked a bit and he told me that he got rid of the Ouija board. He said that he had terrible nightmares after that and that he always had the feeling that something was watching him. He's better without the board. This was the only Ouija session I had where something like that happened. The other ones were very harmless. Interesting, but not that spectacular. And hopefully, Luca the little boy is back where he belongs. This experience happened when I was 14. 
Since I was a child, I was fascinated with the occult and paranormal, and also had a few encounters. It was a family thing, and I grew up with that stuff. One day, when I was on winter holidays, two of my friends called me. For the story, I'll call them Ben and Joseph. They're not their real names. They said that they found an old and empty building they wanted to visit, and asked me if I wanted to join them. Ben told me also that it isn't a normal building. According to old stories, it is haunted. They knew I was into that kind of stuff and I absolutely wanted to go with them. My mom and my grandma, who knows about many things about occultism, witchcraft, etc, didn't want me to go at first. My grandma said that this is a place I don't know and it could be very dangerous to search there after paranormal things. But I, but I managed to persuade them. I had a few paranormal experiences before and for me it wasn't a game. I have the right respect and I'm careful with occult and paranormal things because something like that can easily go wrong. Well, the day came where we three set off to the abandoned building. For that, we had to drive a long way with the train in a little city where relatives of Ben lived. We stayed by them for the next few days. On the way, we talked to each other about this building. Ben told me that it's a house that belonged to a doctor who also had his office there. It was very old and should soon be demolished. He then told me a few stories about this house. According to that, there were many ghosts in there, once patients of the doctor, and sometimes people would disappear in there. On some nights you could see figures behind the windows, and some people have heard horrible screams which came from the inside. Not many dared to go there, sometimes just teenagers who wanted to test their courage, especially on Halloween. I believe in ghosts, but I'm also skeptical about stories like this one. There are many like that out there and most of the time it's things people made up over the years. The older the building, the scarier the stories. But again, I am respectful towards that because you don't know who or what could make angry. Joseph on the other hand, didn't believe in that stuff. For him, it sounded like an adventure but he didn't believe that we would see a ghost or something. That's why I like him so much. Although he's very skeptical, he doesn't make fun of people who have experienced weird things. Our group is a healthy mix of different opinions. But let's get on with the story, shall we? We arrived in the afternoon. We were too tired to go to the house that day and decided to go there the next day. The house was really creepy. Very old and we already had a bad feeling about it. My senses told me that it maybe could be a bad idea to go in there. Joseph wasn't that afraid but Ben was already scared. He isn't that brave. I could understand him and told him that we are with him and he doesn't have to be afraid. As a child, I had an experience with something you can describe as a really evil entity. After that experience, my grandma gave me some sort of talisman which would protect me. I borrowed it from Ben with the hope he would feel a bit better. It worked for a while. Finally, we entered the building. It was empty there. Just garbage, pieces of broken furniture and graffiti on the walls. The worst thing was the smell. It stank really bad in there. We began to investigate the rooms. Most of the time, nothing happened. After a while, we wanted to go because we'd seen all the rooms. But then we heard something, something that sounded like screams. At first they were quiet, but they got louder and louder. The screams were female and sounded like the person was in very bad pain. At first, Joseph meant they came from outside, but that wasn't the case. They definitely came from one of the rooms downstairs. Ben became very scared to that point. I feared that he could get a panic attack. We decided that it was best time to go. The screams got louder and more horrible when we went downstairs. I thought that I could hear the words, help please, in those screams. And one thing I noticed was a new smell. It was also bad like the time we entered the house, but it was different. It was so creepy. We ran outside and Ben had to vomit. For him, it was too much and also Joseph, our skeptic, was scared. Near the house, there lived other people and one of them, a young man, came to us and shouted at us what we are doing in this house and why we make such noises. When we told him what happened and that we were not responsible for the screams, he didn't believe us at first and thought that we were fr was a friend of ours there. 
He went into the house. Joseph and I followed him. Ben waited outside. The screaming had already stopped when we entered. We went through every room again, but there was nobody. Joseph searched after tracks if someone else could have been there, but there was nothing. We asked the man if something like this would happen more often. He denied it. After some time, the old house was demolished, and I hope with it, those terrible screams were also gone. I have many over the years, more scary than the last. I'll tell you a fairly recent one. I was at my aunt's house last summer, just before the lockdown happened. One day, my aunt's cook, who lived on the second floor of the house, said that a boy of seven years old comes to his door and watches him sleep at night. He had dusky complexion and wore beads on his neck. We all chalked it up to him being drunk or him finding excuses to leave the job. But he kept complaining of it happening every night. He couldn't sleep and his eyes were always bloodshot. To give a bit of background, I have a well-known history of seeing things since childhood amongst my relatives. I also started feeling a bit of a presence in their house to the extent that I wasn't sleeping at night out of sheer terror. On the fourth day of this happening, I was taking a bath. I had the bathroom locked and also the dressing room double bolted. You can never be too sure using somebody else's bathroom, which was outside the bathroom. Basically, the bedroom had the dressing room in which was the bathroom. Anyway, I clearly heard the lock opening click click once and twice. Those were the double bolts of the dressing room. I thought my uncle had come early from work in the afternoon, which was strange in hindsight. My first concern was that my clothes were out there in the dressing room while I was bathing in the bathroom. I heard a pair of heavy men's shoes against the floor and saw a black silhouette that seemed like black pants through the stained glass of the bathroom door. I approached the cupboard and heard the telltale creaking of the cupboard door swinging open loudly. While I was inside waiting for him to get out fast so I can get my clothes from the dressing room and get dressed, one minute passed. I kept waiting, then another. All I could think was, what's taking him so long? I peeped through the stained glass to see what he was up to, as there was no sound of him going about his business. I opened the bathroom door and there was nobody in the dressing room. He must have gone out. I didn't think much of it. I quickly got dressed, picked my shit up, and went on to open the dressing room door. It didn't open. My blood ran cold. The dressing room door was still locked. I opened it, click click once and twice, the double bolts. I was confused at this point. Had he locked the door from outside? I went out. My nieces were still sleeping in the bedroom. I went out in the lobby where my sister was watching TV. I knew the answer before I even asked her. Did uncle go into the dressing room? She looked at me weird. It's three in the afternoon. He doesn't come home before nine at night. And nobody's home. Nobody went to the bathroom. So I went on and told her about the whole thing. After which, she lost her shit too. She went into the dressing room. Lo and behold, all the cupboards were locked. I swear to God, I told her, that cupboard did swing open with the creaking and all. Then we called uncle at his work. He hadn't left his office, didn't come home. To this date, I don't understand. Something, somebody opened the double bolts, came in, opened the cupboards and went out while everything was locked and there was no one home. The very next day, my sister and cousin were watching TV at midnight and they felt a presence behind them while they heard the stove in the kitchen being switched on and felt something go up behind them and up the stairs. Their house has an extensive history of crazy shit going down. Yeah, they shot bricks. My parents divorced when I was eight and my older brother and I lived with my mom and stepdad. My brother and I only got to see my dad on the weekends and like two weeks during summer breaks. About a year or so after the divorce, my dad started taking me and my brother to our grandma's house. This was more or less because my dad wasn't great with kids and had no idea what to do with us. My grandma, on the other hand, had raised my dad, his two brothers and sister, so she was great with kids. 
Being so young, I hadn't really noticed all the freaky things going on in the house or realized how truly freaky they were. Looking back, there were tons of little things that were easily written off and debunked, I guess. Though, there were just as many occurrences that are harder to do so. My grandma owned a Ouija board. Just casually kept it in a dresser. As a kid, I didn't fully understand just how bad those boards could be. I just saw it as a weird thing that my cousins liked to play with, that also happened to come with scary stories. However, my grandma insisted that the spirit attached to it was good. To be fair, I don't really remember any evil vibes. Terrifying, yes. Evil, not really. I remember my brother using the fact that there was a ghost in the house to his advantage. He used to scare me by saying, there's someone behind you, when there wasn't. There is this one time when we were both in the playroom slash kids bedroom, playing with my Polly Pockets and his G.I. Joes, that he pointed to the wall next to me and said, there's a man there. I didn't see anything and I can't exactly remember if he was tricking me again, but my brother was so insistent that it freaked me out. The house was all one story, no attic or basement. Though there was a back room that was just as creepy as any basement. It was always dark and the tiled floors were sticky no matter how many times you mopped it. It was absolutely terrifying of the back room. I think that's where the spirit lived. Plus, I was scared of the dark. To make everything much worse, in one of the two rooms back there, my grandma kept her dolls on shelves. It was an old bedroom or something that no one used, just two walls lined with dolls of all sorts. Clowns, porcelain collectors, you name it. The collection even stretched out into another corner of the back room. There was also an organ in the back room, one more modern I think. It had switches and stuff to modify the sound, kind of like an older fashioned keyboard piano. Anyway, there were so many times we'd all be sitting in the living room and just watching TV when a key or two on the organ would go off. No cats, only two hours that only jumped onto the couch. It was always so random, but still spooky. The thing is, we had one of those keyboard pianos, musicians don't come to me for not knowing proper terms, in the front bedroom, but it never went off. Unless it was a cousin or nephew or my brother playing tricks. I was also terrified of that front bedroom too. It was just some silly little unexplainable thing. I was leaving the room and out of the corner of my eye I saw a flash of blue. I turned around and see a flat blue blob thing on the floor under the bed. The second after, as if I knew I saw it, it slid back under the bed in a flash. Like slime being sucked up by a vacuum, just whoop, gone. After I ran out, calmed down and gathered the nerve to go back, I checked under the bed to find nothing. I have absolutely no idea what it was, if it was real or if it was my child's imagination. I think it's safe to say I was terrified of that entire house. I only felt okay if someone else was with me. As I said before, I loathed the back room. My grandma would send me back there sometimes to get toys or something and each time it felt like something was watching me. I love my grandma and that house does not, it does hold great memories. But everything about it screamed horror movies and I was the main protagonist, especially the bathtub. So the playroom slash kids bedroom was meant to be shared between my brother and I fairly, meaning we were both supposed to sleep in there or at least take turns. Thing is, my brother not only being the eldest, but the only one of us who plays video games had dibs every single night. Where he'd be all cozy and safe in the bedroom with the GameCube, I'd be scared stiff most nights watching TV in the living room until I felt comfortable enough to fall asleep, which happened around 1 in the morning most nights. My grandma always closed the living room curtains at night and also turned off all the lights and electronics, but she'd go to her room and fall asleep with the TV on. That left me in the eerie dark living room with only a green glow light that emitted from the DVD slash VHS player. For the most part, sleeping on the couch in the very open and exposed living room, nothing really happened. The night I had a very close encounter with the spirit of the house, I won't go into too much detail but I will elaborate. The spirit seemed to come from the bathroom, which was down the hall and out of sight. To me, 
All I heard was a mixture of TV static and that ringing in your ears when a room is incredibly silent. As I walked down the hall, in my head, it was more like a horror movie floating slash gliding. That static slash ringing grew louder. It eventually came into sight and stood at the foot of the couch. Remembering it, I see a shadow figure, but I honestly can't be sure. I had turned the TV off at some point because I thought the presence might have been my grandma or my brother. I had honestly believed it was my brother at first, but when I called out to him and got no response, I was pretty much pissing my pants. That late night encounter was probably the scariest thing I witnessed in that house. Also, the closest I've ever been to a spirit slash ghost. Honestly, I still feel that fear even now. I don't know the name of the spirit, if it was really good or bad, but I definitely know I feel bad for whoever lives there now. If the ghost is still there or if it moved on with my grandma, I'm not sure. It was a creepy ass old house. Can only pray the pipes weren't too expensive to replace. When I was five or six, my paternal grandfather Poppy passed away in the house he built with my dad. Nothing crazy, he peacefully died in his sleep. The night of his passing, my sister said she saw a see-through Poppy staring at her sleeping. His death left us in a lot of debt, forcing us to move back into the family home. Since moving into the house, we would encounter the usual crap many people have experienced. Footsteps, lights turning on and off, doors opening that were once closed and voices. Some of my grade school friends didn't like sleeping over at my house because they thought it was haunted. I had lots of nightmares and anxiety growing up. My mom told me recently, one night when I was little, I saw a white creature with a terrifying pale face on the foot of my bed. I don't remember this story. It could be sleep paralysis, a dream, or a child's lie. My mom says she remembers this vividly because of how terrified and descriptive I was. My dad and I would see a shadow figure walking outside every now and again. We called him the shadow man. We brushed it off as our eyes playing tricks on us because we never saw him at the same time. We would always be alone. Fast forward to being 20 and living back at the family house after I came home from college. I was dating my ex at the time. He said when he'd sleep over, pillows would be ripped from under his head at night, blankets thrown off, things of his would be knocked off countertops. We both witnessed covers being thrown off and his things being pushed off countertops. One night, my ex and I were in the hot tub on the patio overlooking the backyard. That's when we both see the shadow man walking straight through my backyard. Fight or flight kicked in and we both got the hell out of Dodge. Another night, while we were at the fire pit in the backyard, he pointed to his white looking face peeking up from some shrubbery. Its head was about all you could see over the bushes. It poked its head down. By then, we had seen enough and didn't want to stick around to find out what that was and locked up for the night. Fast forward to quarantine. My best friend and I are staying in the family house together for lockdown. Bored of playing video games, we decided to watch a scary movie. We watch Antrim. I don't know how to spell it. It's basically like Dante's Inferno, I think, but the horror genre. As soon as the movie finished, I look through the crack between the door frame and the door. I see this figure staring at us. My friend saw it too. At this point, we're terrified. For anyone who watches Harry Potter, it feels like what I imagine being kissed by a Dementor would feel like. That's like the closest comparison I have. She, to this day, never wants to speak about it because of how freaked out it made her feel. I think it's worth noting that this thing was a darker mass than the Shadow Man. I'm now 23 and my best friend no longer lives with me. I live alone. She says she feels a very negative or depressed vibe in this house. Other people have said the same thing. Stay for a longer period of time. I told my mom about the things that have been going on. She then showed me why there's a Bible open to a protection prayer in every bedroom. At this point, I'm suspecting my house or property could have had a doorway to the spirit world or something. I know that could be far-fetched, but I'm really curious if anyone's had anything similar happen to them. <laughs> 